I for today's tear down, one more old British Ionix box. So this one seems really old. It is a common item on British eBay and actually most of them have the same problem here of a faceplate poking out because of a design flow here I will show you later. So we have this device, the Marconi Navigational Analyzer. Excuse me. So we have a big handle, two indicators uh, dials on the front. Here is for you the manufacturer plate with a nice old school uh, Marconi logo, uh, broad arrow, uh, NATO stock number, and uh, other information like the uh, weight which is uh, 11 libs no 10 libs serial number apparently here additional information on the top about uh, compass safe distance and apart from this just uh, one connector at the back with a rusty uh, quick screw quick uh, fitting so it is called uh, the nav analyzer navigational so it does some uh, navigation stuff first I will remove this front cover and we will find out what we have behind here actually not much because it is just uh, block of metal with two dials but at least we will see a little bit better the dials uh, this thing was super dirty when I received it and I, I do, actually I cleaned it in water but it was a good price because it is an item you find on eBay at very random prices from 1 to 75 British pounds and I got this one for 10 or 15, something like this. So here is what we have. Uh, plastic uh, window here. With uh, this block of metal and these two dials which are completely uh, stuck in place. They will not turn. This one from uh, 0 to uh, 30. And this one from 0 to uh, 360. So uh, compass indication. Obviously this and they are uh, mounted onto a solid uh, piece of aluminium which is uh, probably containing uh, gears to uh, move it. And it is all for this front part, not much else to see. So now I will put the camera over here and we will have a look at the main uh, assembly, well the be behind the main cover and you will see it is quite full. So what can we expect in this thing? Is it a whole bunch of synchros and resolvers and gears everywhere? Ok, so obviously we have some uh, synchros and resolvers here connected to the front uh, block but we have also uh, some electronics and in particular those four very mysterious metal parts here is the back the other side, side is more or less the same so I will uh, first zoom in for you and I will go manual focus today with my camera because really it does not want to focus so here is some kind of a transformer with a schematic on it first uh, electronics module with a golden transistor very old school glass coated resistors this uh, synchro and other things here so uh, my best guess for this device is around uh, between 1965 and 1970 
I did not find any particular dead chord, but given the construction and the, the component tree, it is my guess. So about the front panel here that is uh, poking outside, you can see we have two metal parts here screwed to the stop uh, frame, but here they are just attached to the front panel with two metal rods in holes that are not secured in any way. So maybe it did uh, oxidize a little bit this part and there is uh, some uh, play now, but it is quite weird why they did not secure this part uh, with a screw instead of these two metal rods. Uh, really, I am wondering what is going on here in the design. And most of the uh, similar items I have seen on eBay have the exact same problem. On the other side, the synchro devices, synchro transmitter, resolver, gear aid something. With this actually little device at the back. More electronics with very old school uh, parts and transistors made by uh, Mullard in Britain. Here, more electronics at the back. This weird part is a very typical Smith's uh, component. It is actually an optocoupler. We have a light source at one side and uh, some kind of a phototransistor at the other in this uh, metal tube. At the bottom of the box, what do we have? One more bunch of very old school black body transistors. The connections to all of these modules. So apparently in the design it was specified that the modules must be possible to remove. But actually you have to undo all the connecting screws here to undo them. The connector body and all at the back of the device. Focus. Some uh, Transformer apparently with very old school uh, glass diodes and some more electronics. Here I will try to unzoom for you. You get the idea. Now the deal is to uh, remove the four modules in order to be able to see what we have inside. Okay, a uh, billion of screws later. I can now remove the modules here. So, by the way, the situation of the frame here is even worse now. And you can see, yes, this metal parts here. They will not come out completely for some reason, but they are definitely not uh, secured in, uh, in any way. It is very, very weird. So, the modules will just come off like this because they are connected by the... secured by their connections. Here at the bottom. So we have four of them. Each one has a different uh, model number. Four, five, six, seven. But I do not know if they are, they are the model numbers. The serial numbers are actually written at the bottom here. You can see we have uh, also their uh, NATO stock number, but I believe they are obsolete numbers and they are not uh, available online anymore. And to open them, obviously, you have four screws each time, so it will be. Uh, 16 more screws to undo. What we will have inside are the more electromechanical assemblies to compute things or are they just electronics to drive the stuff we, are, uh, we have here at the front. We will find out but this time I will do it with uh, 
Power Screwdriver, I believe. Because really, this thing is annoying. This one. So let's do it. Here we are. The screws are undone, so I will open them one at a time. Ta -da! So, this one. And now my camera is focusing correctly. It looks like when the camera is cold, it does not focus correctly. It is really weird. Of course, there is not any uh, firmware available update for it. It is a Panasonic HDC SD100 for those who wonder. So, what do we have in here? Okay, so obviously electronics, an assembly with a four sides, as you can see. Millard, 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 a lot of uh, very old school transistors. Uh, probably uh, silver mica capacitors here, but this one, for some reason, it looks like it is fried. It is really weird. Big uh, red capacitors here. In the middle section, it looks like we have some uh, adjustable inductors. You can see here more of these big capacitors here and more transistors here. A piece of uh, seal for the cover and it is all for this one. Some springs at the top. So really beautiful construction. These parts are clean because of the it was sealed obviously and there is this kind of uh, clear plastic for insulating from the case still no dead code ok second one ah, obviously quite the same kind of construction the plastic did remain inside the case here oops this is coming off by the way I will maybe not uh, reinstall them, not sure. So what do we have this time? The same kind of assembly, but some old school Mollard OC29 transistor, power transistor. Some kind of a coil or transformer here. Oops. With a paint flaking off. Uh, this part is Plessay round, so very, very British construction, a big uh, wrapped um, uh, polypropylene or something like this capacitor here, very nice capacitor, this one, some adjustments, trimmers, one more here, by Penton Bournes, England. So interesting to see how everything is uh, British made in this thing. And I need to actually pull this in order to be able to reinstall it correctly. So spoiler, in fact I did already open these modules previously to clean. Uh, in particular the seal here was very dirty. So next one, the same flavor, except we have wet tantalum capacitors and some uh, high precision capacitors here. Look at this value first and then uh, plus or minus 1%. Interesting, there is in the middle. something but it will not be possible to reach it. I can see a piece of foam in here. 
on something in the middle, but given the wires configuration, I believe it will not be possible anyways to uh, undo the parts to access them because you should require to cut wires. Yes, quite annoying. England, England, England. Uh, this thing is uh, screaming many in England. Quite amazing. Uh, very, very beautiful construction. You can see. So the last module. Ah, it will reveal this time uh, maybe what we have in in the middle. So you can see exactly the same kind of parts. Exactly the same, so they must be uh, servo controls and uh, amplifiers and such for the uh, synchros. We have a relay here in metal can, and we have uh, this time openings, and we can see. Ah, I see brown uh, rectangular things, so I believe they are bigger versions of this. It looks like. Uh, stuck in the middle like this, more uh, very old school, uh, probably germanium transistors. Interesting. Oh, an unusual uh, shape here. Capacitor. And it is all. So, really, these modules are uh, interesting. Very, very beautiful. But a little bit out of focus, also. So I guess it is all for this uh, device. We did see everything. Uh, here you have the uh, connection plate for the mo these modules. So the screws are doing the connection. We have an overview here at the stuff uh, on the front. The back side of the synchros, probably here at the back, some relay, and it is all so very, very particular stuff. Uh, complicated and uh, no information whatsoever available online, of course. And now I am set for uh, a very time consuming reassembly. So I hope you did enjoy this one. It is a really interesting device. I was curious about it, but I had to wait to find one at a decent price. And still I do not understand the design flow here at the front. So thanks for watching. Bye bye.